and it is very, very itchy. Little stinging sensations. Sleeping, how did I sleep for the first month? The next point I have to talk about is the swelling. Hey lovelies, welcome back to my channel. I am back with another hair update. Woo! I'm so excited to be shooting this because if I'm doing an update, that means time is going by. I'm not gonna lie, it feels like it's going by quickly, but also slowly at the same time. I don't know how to explain it. As you guys can see from the title, today I will be sharing my one month update, um, one month post hair transplant. I'll be sharing all the ins and outs, all the little bits and things in between. Everything that's been happening from the first day that I did my hair transplant up until today, which is four weeks. I can't believe it's been four weeks already. So yeah, if you're interested, then keep watching. This video will be only about the hair transplant, but the next video will be all the details, everything that you guys want to know, which has mainly been price, how much I paid, which hotel I stayed in, um, would I recommend them? How did you book them? How did you know they were the clinic to go for? How did you have your consultation? All of those kind of questions will be in the next video. So let's get straight into the video. You guys wanna see how my hair is looking underneath this wig. So let me show you. So this is usually how I have my hair underneath my wigs. I have this cap on underneath my wigs, underneath my hats, underneath my headscarves. But I'm gonna take it off to show you guys what it looks like because I know that's what you guys came here for. So. You guys already know that I decided to keep my hair and literally just fill in my hairline um, and of course except the donor area. I do, a lot of people ask me if I plan on cutting my hair. Yes, I'm going to cut it. Um, I'm going to wait for the donor area at the back to get to a good length and then I'm going to cut everything the same length. But yeah, let me show you my edges. So this is four weeks post hair transplant and guys I think this looks pretty good. If I take it back you can see it's a little bit patchy still because of course we're only four weeks in and some parts including the front here you can see is a little bit patchy and um, because of the shock hair loss and um, patchy on the sides but it's growing in really nicely. Now I'm going to turn around and show you guys the back, which I get the most questions about. Is that part of your hair growing and will it grow back? Yes, it will grow back. And like I said, once it grows to a nice length, I'll cut everything. But let me turn around. The donor area. It's growing back really quickly, actually. So this is a month. And yeah, there's hair there. Um, this is how it's looking. Yeah, so that's how my hair's looking. And month four, I am really, really happy with the results. I can't lie, I'm really, really happy with the results. The hair is growing really nicely. And yeah, it's looking really good. So I just can't wait for the two months to go by, three months, six months, one year. Um, really, really looking forward to it. But we're gonna go through the points. I'm put some points on my phone to talk about how this month has been. Of course, this is a one month update, so I'll be talking about where I am at now, but I will touch on a few things. First of all, the front part. So the front of my hair, the recipient area, is still a little bit sensitive to touch. It doesn't hurt, nothing hurts, I'm not in any pain anywhere, but when I touch it, it is a little bit sensitive on the sides especially, and it is very, very itchy. This week, it's been itchy. So usually, it's the donor area that is quite itchy, which I'll talk about in a minute but the front has actually been quite itchy where I kind of have to gently kind of just like rub, like do little circular <laughs> motions to just to quickly like um, scratch it a little bit because it's really, really, really itchy. It's bearable, it's not uncomfortable, it is just itchy. So the front part is a little bit itchy, still a little bit sensitive. Um, a lot of people spoke about numbness. I don't have any numbness. It's just a little bit sensitive to touch. Um, I've also noticed that I have started experiencing a little bit of the shock loss. The shock loss um, happens in the first, between the first two weeks, is it two weeks? They say the first, no, the shock loss happens between like the first month and I think in two months or even longer. It just depends on you. Um, they say everyone is different. So I've been experiencing some shock loss, especially at the front. You will see at the front um, where the hair transplant was there in line. It should be full. There's a little bit patchy there and just a tiny bit on the sides. But overall, I think we're doing okay with that. I've also been experiencing some ingrown hairs on the front and also on the back. Um, but I'm not touching them. I'm not trying to dig it out or anything. It's mainly like little ones at the front. And as I'm kind of just washing it, I just gently moisturize, not moisturize. I gently massage the fronts where I see them. And yeah, I kind of move on with that. 
Um, up until today, I had been washing the recipient area and the donor area every day. I have missed one or two days. I'm not going to lie. I have missed one or two days. I'm just, I'm just so tired. I can't wait to wash my hair. Um, but I hadn't washed the rest of my hair because they said that you can't dry your hair with a um, blow dryer or anything. And I didn't want to get, and I couldn't put any product on the donor area or the recipient area. And I didn't want any oils or anything to go in it. So I haven't actually washed the rest of my hair in a month which is not like me. You guys know I would usually wash it weekly or fortnightly. But tonight, now that I'm week four, one of the week, one of the things that I can do now is go back to my regular wash routines, my hair wash routines. I can wash my hair with my own shampoo, my conditioner, my treatments. I've literally got everything prepared. I'll talk about it in my next video, but I've literally got my treatments, my bonding um, treatments, my shampoos. I've got everything. I've got my oils. Um, so those are the things that I can start doing with my hair. The only thing I wasn't sure about is um, other people have shared that they used oils for one month. Um, but some people have um, decided not to use oils for one month. I asked, I actually um, emailed the aftercare team because I wanted to make sure that I can actually use oil on my hair. They suggested um, that I use the oil on my hair, but I leave it on for about an hour and then I wash it off. Um, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do like a hot oil treatment. So I'm just going to leave it on my hair, cover my hair and then sorry i'm gonna put it in my hair leave it on my hair and then wash it off um but yeah that's what they suggested they suggest to do that until six months but i personally think because i've also did some research um and genuinely they say you can use oil on your hair from four weeks but not every day so let's say twice a week that has been the general answer that i've been seeing when i've been doing my research you can use oil on your hair um so I think for a month, I will just put the oil on my hair, leave it on for an hour and then wash it off when I like, let's say twice a week um, or once a week when I'm wash my hair. Um, but yeah, that's the only like question mark I'm not really sure about yet because I do definitely want to get in and start using oils and stuff like that. But anyway, I just can't wait to just be able to just wash my hair normally, wash everything else because to wash my front and the back, I'm literally leaning forward to the shower head, washing the front, not to wash the rest. And I'm literally turning my head sideways to literally wash the back of my hair so that the water drops inside. So, so happy that is over. Second point, let's talk about the donor area. The donor area, I would say, has been the most sensitive part of my hair during this whole time. So when you get home um, from your surgery, it is very sensitive. You can't even touch it. Like, I, don't I didn't touch it. It's quite sore. It's quite, and um, what's that term? Uh... So it's, uh, what is it? I don't know, um, there's a time in my head I can't find it, but you can't touch it. It's very, very sensitive. You have to leave it open. So light sleeping was quite uncomfortable. I had the cushion around my neck to make sure that my head doesn't touch anything. But as the weeks went on, guys, it became uncomfortable. Like the itching was crazy. Like, and you just want to like scratch it, like scratch, scratch it, but you can't scratch it like that. So I was just kind of massaging it. But there are also times when you feel like little stinging sensations. I think that's the best way to describe it. Little stinging sensations that you'd feel on your hair and then it will go. Um, sometimes it will stay a little bit longer <laughs> and then sometimes it will go. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but there was times when it was uncomfortable. It was bearable, of course, but there were times when it was a little bit uncomfortable. It stung a little bit um, and I, it would literally come and go. A lot of people said that they sprayed water or they sprayed aloe vera gel or juice on it or whatever, but I just left it. I just left it. Or I just put the foam on that they gave me and then I washed it and I found that that helped. So every day I had been washing the front and the back of my hair. Yes, yeah, so it was very, very itchy. Then I started feeling sometimes that there was like, um, like I said, ingrown hairs or some kind of scabs that was building up on my hair. It was so sensitive, guys. The donor hair area is really, really sensitive. It's not painful. And again, I have to say it's not painful. It doesn't hurt. But if you touched it to, like, if you touched it in the beginning, it would, it is uncomfortable. The itchiness is mad, guys. I'm going to say your donor area will itch you a lot. Um, and those tingling sensations will come and go, come and go in the first couple of weeks. But I can say after the third week, it kind of, it, um, it wasn't as much. And now, like, it doesn't, it doesn't happen. It's just itchy. It's just itchy, which is fine. Sleeping, how did I sleep for the first month? So for the first two weeks, they advise you to you sleep with the um, traveling pillow around your neck and um, to basically keep your head up to avoid like touching your front or your back. Um, but I personally, up until the day before yesterday, I was sleeping with my travel pillow because I just didn't want my edges to rub or anything to rub 
um, or like interfere with the grafts. So I'd been sleeping with that. And you know, it's actually quite comfortable because even when I would lie down, if I wanted to lie on the side, I would just have my travel pillow here and it would be on my face. So I'd still be able to lie down, it wouldn't be on my hair. Um, so that's how I slept. In the first couple of days, um, I slept upright um, because they advise you to swell up like upright because of my swelling because the head um for the first couple of days but thereafter i think a couple of days i started going a little bit lower so i wasn't up like 360 or not 360 90 degrees i was a little bit lower but i was using my traveling um pillow will i still use it maybe i've just got so used to using it and you know it's just keeping my hair off the pillow so i would prefer to do that so that was fine for me that was never a problem for me the next point i have to talk about is the swelling oh my days all oh my days i'm going to share with you guys some pictures or some videos of how bad my hair was swollen i looked like an alien guys my head was so big like i always thought how would i look with a big head wow i didn't want to see that again i did not want to keep seeing that because the way my head looked what i look i oh my gosh so embarrassing it's so embarrassing james is just laughing at me all the time my head was huge, like huge. And then the swelling spread it to my eyes. So my eyes were puffy. My eyes looked bruised, like I had a fight. Someone punched me, it was more in one eye than the other eye. So even now, the side effect from that is that I have, like, especially under one eye, my eye is still quite dark under the eye. I think it's from the bruising because I didn't really have dark under eyes before the surgery. And now I do. So um, my friend suggested me to use Arnica. I think it's called Arnica. Um, which is a bruising cream to see if that will help. But yeah, the bruising was insane. I was swollen. I would say it properly went down after six, five to six days. And they say three to four days. Now, guys, it was five to six, even maybe seven. I was swollen for a whole week. So I didn't leave the house. I literally stayed in my house. So if you are doing a hair transplant, most people that I've seen online sharing their journeys, they weren't as swollen as me. Um, but I would advise trying to get time off work during that period of time because you just don't know how your swelling is going to be like. I knew that your head swollen, but my head was big. I did not know my head was going to swell that bad, like, because I didn't see anyone else's head swell that bad. So it was really bad. But again, I was in no pain. Um, for the first week, I was on a medication. I had to take antibiotics, which I didn't really want to take. But I have to take it. They, they advise you to take antibiotics just to prevent you from catching any infections. If you do catch any infections, to prevent you from getting sick. You have to take anti-swelling tablets, which clearly didn't really do its job. And then I thought to myself, if I wasn't taking anti-swelling, how big would my head would have actually got? Oh, that's mad. So anti-swelling tablets, antibiotics, and... Um, and painkillers, just paracetamol if you needed it. So I think I stopped taking paracetamols after the second day because I wasn't in any pain. It was literally just the swelling. Another point is the rest of my hair. So a lot of people ask like, what are you doing with the rest of your hair? So in the first month, I didn't actually wash it because they advise you not to use a hair dryer or anything. And I just didn't want the, um, the shampoo or the conditioner, the oils, to drip into my donor area or the front area so I've literally just kept it in my cane rows in the middle of my hair um I would oil it I would literally just grease just the scalp of in the middle to make sure it doesn't spread anywhere um and I've literally just kept it in cane rows and took them out every few days and kind of just add some grease and stuff um, and oil and kind of came with it back and at some point I am going to cut my hair I just want to wait until the donor area gets to a good length and then I can cut it but like I said guys this um hair transplant was mainly for my edges for me to start wearing my hair the way that i want to wear it without having to manipulate or style it or slick it or swoop the swoop the front of my hair in a certain way um to wear it back i would just want to be able to be free and keeping my hair means that once the front is at a good level i can do sew-ins i could have my hair out i can wear my hair back and cover the donor area until it's that length i just didn't want to shave off all of my hair because it is just not what i wanted i have been leaving the house with this wig if you guys check back my other videos some of you are probably looking thinking Desiree you've just done a hair transplant why do you have a wig that is on your hairline guys if you look back on my previous videos you will see that I customized this wig for it to be appropriate for my hairline you will see that my hair transplant is not being pressed or covered at all and voila you gotta love wigs guys you've got to love wigs i customize this wig because i didn't always want to leave my house with a headscarf and a hat um and because of my work i'm a content creator and i'm in front of the camera 
I did want to have another option of looking, you know, cute and put together. Um, so I created this wig. You can, however, from one month, you can wear wigs, you can wear lace wigs, you can wear hats, you can wear scarves, you can wear anything on your head. Um, which I probably will do some days because I do have my middle part wig that is like my go-to wig. And this wig is usually like my going out content creating look. Like this is really, really like a dressy hairstyle. It's not my everyday hairstyle when I'm running out with the kids. Do you know what I mean? So I do have another wig that I can use, but I can also wear headbands. And I think I'll probably go more to that because I just think having a wig um, on your hairline, I just don't know if I feel comfortable with that. The wig that I do have is not tight so I could wear it so but at this moment I don't know if I feel 100% comfortable wearing it every day on the front some days I might just leave my house and put my closure wig on and wear it properly and that's okay because it's not I don't I don't because I don't do it every day I don't wear the wigs every day my hairline is not covered every day do you know what I mean so if an occasion comes where I do want to then that's fine because it's not like my hairline is being rubbed or um, having that friction every day I think one of the cons and one of the things I was thinking about the most and worried about the most was how I was going to deal with this journey up until when the hair actually grows back. Um, and now I can't lie, in my head I'm thinking spring and summer is coming up and I don't like to wear fringes in the um, summer. I don't like to wear fringes in the summer, you know, when I go on holiday, what I'm going to do. So it's all of these things that I'm thinking about. Um, so I will then have to consider different hairstyles um I can't yet slick my hair the edges are not long enough yet so it will take a couple of more months until my hair is actually long enough to do it maybe to like September October so until then the only way is to wear wig if I could try to wear this wig and other wigs um or headbands and scarves as much as possible when I'm out then that's what I, I will do but again I work from I I'm at home all the time my work is recording at home. I'm at home in my room, in my house. So my hair is never covered. At home, my hair is never covered. So majority of the time, my hair is not covered. You will only see me in a wig when I'm leaving the house. And usually when I'm at the house, I'm out for an hour or two hours max, and then I'm back home. So majority of my days, I don't have anything covering my hair. So I actually feel okay about that. I don't feel that my hair's getting affected by that or anything. Um, so I have been thinking about the summer. The summer is coming. Um, I am thinking to get another wig made. Um, maybe a bob wig that I can wear when it's really, really hot. Like a very short, blunt wig um, that is not too tight on my hairline and that I can wear on holiday. Um, that's probably the only solution. But like I said, at home, the wig is off. My hair is out. The shampoo and the mousse ran out after two weeks and they say you have to wash your hair every day two weeks with the foam and with the shampoo. It ran out after two weeks so I just started using normal shampoo that I have at home. I think as I said I think my only concern now is because it's growing but it's not at the length yet to match everything and I can't like slick it yet it's a little bit hard for me to style. I know that maybe from like five months I could start doing that but for now yeah I need to cover it I can't just walk out with my hair like that so um for now at home I will make more of an effort to look cute so I do you guys already know at home I do try to look cute with my hair even when I had my normal wigs I did like to keep my cameras nice and neat because you know my husband's at home you know what I mean even, we can't just be looking nice outside of our wigs and then our husband at home see our dead cameras that look like it's been in for months that's just I'm not that girl so I that's the reason why I redo my camos I don't redo it for anyone else literally just my husband because I do want to look a little bit presentable whilst I'm at home um if not I would have I would have left the same camos in from a month ago do you know what I mean um but uh now that I can kind of look after the middle I might even sometimes you know comb out my hair do it in a little top bun <laughs> you know now I can play with my hair so but if it doesn't look that bad now I will just have my hair up sometimes while I'm at home little bun you know a little bit of a you know just to look a little bit cute for my hubby um because you know it's it's been a journey he's been seeing me look like an alien do you know what I mean so um yeah i'm kind of glad that i'm at this stage now that we're finally at week four that i can cover my hair if i want to that i can wear normal wigs if i want to if i want to wear normal wigs every day when I leave the house i can because it will not um disrupt your hairline they do advise you not to of course wear tight wigs like you usually do so i wouldn't wear any glued down i don't wear glue um wigs anyway i wear glueless wigs i won't wear any frontals i don't really wear frontals anyway um i won't have tight wigs on my head 
just because I think it just defeats the whole purpose, which is why even though I've got a short wig already, I wanna get another one made that is not tight, that is loose fitting on my edges because I'm protecting my edges by any means, okay? And I do have one regret. I regret not doing this hair transplant in like, let's say November, December, um, because, you know, I, that was originally the plan for me to do it then, but life was so busy with work as well. I couldn't take that time out to do it then. Christmas season and stuff is really, really busy for our work. Um, I just didn't have that time and then going to New Year's. So getting it done in February, it was not what I wanted because now the sun is, even the clocks are changing on Sunday. Now this is going to be brighter and I'm still going through this growth. And I think if I did it back in November, in December, I would have had a few months growth by now. Do you know what I mean? So that is only my regret not doing it in the winter months. So if you guys, so if you guys are thinking about doing your hair transplant, definitely do it in the winter months. And another reason why I say that is because they also suggest you to stay out of sun, um, stay out of doing any activities that's going to make you sweat. And that's the reason why they tell you to take stay out of the sun or doing activities. Because if you're sweating, it can affect the hair grafts that were implanted in your hair. So if you do it in the summer, you can still do it in the summer. People still do it in the summer. But you've just got to be careful and stay out away from the sun. I think for seven days or ten days, I don't remember. Because um, it can affect... Um, the implantation and you really don't want to um so that's my only regret and yeah but i'm still like i need to still look cute this summer but you know by the end of the year i'm hoping that my hair looks all cute by then but so far it looks like the hair grafts are taken it has been implanted that my hair is growing and that's what i'm most happy about but if there's any other question you guys have let me know in the comment section because i'm going to be doing monthly updates um but like i said the next video is going to be more about you know how i booked with them how i found them them, how much did it cost and all of those kind of nitty gritty questions I'll be showing in my next video so thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you in my next one bye